Alex Garland, the writer-director of Civil War, has been very hit and miss with me. The first half of his stories hit really well, but the second part usually misses the target, veering off wildly, sometimes crossing into a completely different genre. This first happened when I read The Beach. First half, one of the best books I've ever read. Second half, post-execution in the cannabis fields, and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? I got a similar experience with 28 Days Later. The iconic images of Killian Murphy walking through a deserted post-apocalyptic London were creepy and terrifying, but all that atmosphere and tension was lost with the introduction of the Randy military men. Sunshine started off like Armageddon, until we're thrust into what appeared to be a lost sequel for Event Horizon. The first half of Annihilation was interesting, but as the film progressed I was increasingly looking over at my girlfriend, wondering if she had slipped a hallucinogen in my beer. With his latest project, Civil War, Garland has changed tack. He's dispensed with the good half of the story and gone straight to the dog shit. This whole movie is very disappointing. The story follows a group of war correspondents and photographers who are covering a brutal civil war raging across America. In the real world, it's election year in the United States, so Garland had to tread carefully, not appearing to be pro-Democrat or Republican, as this would have certainly had many dismissing the movie as political propaganda. In fact, I don't remember either mainstream political party mentioned during the course of the film. We don't really understand what started the war, or the politics involved. You can understand why the film takes this approach, as it doesn't want to be inflammatory and exacerbate any existing political divides. The main problem with this is that we don't really get a concept of what's going on. Without knowing why the war started, you can't really pick a side or get too emotionally involved. The only thing we do know is that the president is a bad man, a totalitarian who likes bombing his own citizens, and that he doesn't like the FBI very much. The film attempts to unify any existing political opponents in the audience by creating an unlikely military alliance between California and Texas. This makes the movie very unrealistic and strangles any horror around this potential scenario unfolding. The film tries to ignore this limitation by not focusing too much on the war itself, but rather telling the story from the perspective of the aforementioned war correspondents as they make their way from New York to Washington. They are trying to get an interview with the evil president before rebel forces make it to the White House and blow his brains out. We are told this is a suicide mission. This is another common theme in Alex Garland movies. In Annihilation, Natalie Portman and her team of scientists embark on a mission through Area X, which has killed off everyone else who has attempted it. In 28 Days Later, Killian Murphy and Chum's road trip across zombie apocalyptic England, and in Sunshine we had a group of astronauts travelling across the galaxy to save Earth on a mission they're not expected to come back from. The only difference is the characters in Civil War aren't particularly interesting or likeable. Kirsten Dunst plays Lee. She is the hard and cynical war photographer who has seen it all before, and is basically a double hard bastard. Then we have a younger, ideological and inexperienced Jesse, whose age seems to vary between 15 and 30 as the story progresses. There's also a guy from Florida who is barely worth talking about as he's just a bit of a useless bumbling fuckwit. And then we've got the older journalist, whose only purpose for being there is so everyone can joke about how old, useless and decrepit he is. The film follows these reporters as they encounter various scenes of gruesomeness and threat which they have to deal with. It's all been done before. Garland has definitely taken inspiration from Stanley Kubrick's Full Metal Jacket, but this movie isn't nearly as good. Essentially, the whole film feels like a zombie film without the zombies. There is nothing original here, but we have seen better films that cover this type of subject matter. The Road, for example, was a far more terrifying vision of what human beings are capable of when the shit truly hits the fan. There is no mention of food shortages, and everyone seems to be fairly happy. The war, for the most part, seems like a trivial inconvenience. The main characters are very one-dimensional, we have a typical mentor and underling relationship between Lee and Jesse. The older photographer imparts knowledge of how to take great war photos without dying in the process. The development of the younger character is just outright ridiculous, however. She goes from being a complete weakling to psychopathic voyeur in the blink of an eye. Conversely, Lee's double hard bastard transforms into a dribbling nervous wreck without explanation. What is the timeline for this road trip exactly? I may be an ignorant Brit, but I thought the drive from New York to Washington was fairly quick. I know they have to take a back way to avoid trouble, but for this character development to take place, this journey must have taken about seven years. 
We are introduced to two reporters from Hong Kong in a bizarre and out-of-context frat boy car chase and passenger swap scene that wouldn't be out of place in Dazed and Confused or the actual road trip movie. The introduction of these non-white characters is insanely convenient for the plot as I've barely blinked before our protagonists run into a group of KKK paramilitaries who have traded their white hoods for Elton John sunglasses. Although this scene doesn't have anything we haven't seen before, it is by far the best part of the film due to the introduction of Jesse Plemons, who is re-channeling Todd from Breaking Bad. For the first time, there is an overwhelming feeling of threat and tension. Unfortunately, this scene only lasts for about two minutes, so if you've seen the trailer and are hoping for an extended intervention from the wildly talented Jesse Plemons, you'll be sorely disappointed. Speaking of disappointments, the end battle doesn't really land for me either. It didn't really feel like the whole city was being overwhelmed with an invading force. The incursion in the White House also felt unrealistic and very low budget. The concept of a modern civil war playing out across America was an interesting premise, but ultimately this movie was pretty forgettable. There have been other war movies like Blood Diamond which were much better. There was no emotional payoff, we didn't really get to know or care about any of the characters. To be honest, the whole film feels very rushed and I honestly think it would have worked better as a mini-series. It was pretty obvious who was going to die and how they were going to die. Speaking of which, somebody really needs to learn the art of rugby tackling. Lesson 101, dive to the floor if you're going to save someone from a bullet. Don't just stand there like a utter lemon because it fits the plot. Garland saved the worst till last with a truly awful end scene, which is where he finally introduced one of his mid-film genre swaps, pivoting this movie to laugh-out-loud comedy. The end scene really was that bad. All in all, I think a line from a Guns N' Roses song could summarise this film more perfectly. I don't need your civil war.